Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Cup and Corner. Today I wanted to color out of Chibi Girls. Uh, this is the second one they came out with. This is the two books in one. So it is Chibi Girls 1 and 2 that they made into the grayscale by Jade Summers. And I wanted to use the new Aspire color markers that I received from them. Um, and I just recently did a review on so I wanted to go ahead and color a picture entirely with the Aspire color uh, alcohol markers and see if my thoughts on them are still the same as they were in the review after actually coloring a picture with them. So the picture that I picked out is this cute picture with the uh, hairdresser <laughs> and uh, I thought this was kind of cute so let's see I still have my color chart out here from yesterday so I will be using this I still had my markers all over the desk and I kind of got them off to the right side over here kind of in color family so that as I pick out the colors I want to use I can kind of find them a little bit faster um so let's start um let's see what should we start with well of course the skin so let's see what skin tone would I like to go with I think I will go with the powder pink YR 27 and I have that right here and I think I'm going to try using the chisel tip even though me and chisel tips do not get along real well let me zoom you in here a little bit and I can kind of let you know what's been going on in the Geezy household here. Um, why I have not been making many videos lately. Kind of been out of commission here. Uh, first um, is my boyfriend Bob was having some additional problems with his stent in his esophagus if you didn't see if you're new to my channel and didn't see previous videos my boyfriend had esophageal cancer um, last year and went through you know the chemo um, radiation all that fun stuff um, and then went through surgery had his esophagus removed um, and they put a stent in to keep the part of the esophagus that he actually did keep open so it wouldn't close on him well he's been having problems with the stent and already had to go in and have one replaced because it for some reason kind of disappeared <laughs> that was in february well then now recently he was having problems again with not being able to eat and so went back in and um Thursday had to have another procedure done in the hospital the stent was still there but it was misplaced it was out of line I guess and we have a misty laying down up here um, so they removed that one and put a new one in actually found the first one and it was in his stomach is that bizarre or what because that would have been in his stomach for oh over a month probably a couple months 
and uh, oh yeah at least a couple months so yeah thought that was pretty weird but yes on Thursday they were able to get them in right away and do that rather than waiting because on Friday he had hernia surgery <laughs> So two days in a row, this guy was put under and had to have procedures done. But they really wanted to find out what was going on with this stent before he had his hernia surgery so that they wouldn't have to wait too long because he was really having problems eating again. So both procedures went really well he is up and around and doing really good after the hernia surgery and it's only been a couple days so yeah um that's been awesome um earlier in the week as many of you know i babysit my grandkids every day and they have had colds, which, of course, I caught <laughs> and am still trying to get over completely. It's better than it was, and I'm slowly getting over it. But now, or I should say on, oh, what day was it? Let's see. Um... I believe it was yes Wednesday Maddie was completely sick with I think this is skin here completely sick totally down and out with the flu um, just miserable did nothing all day but lay in my lap for the entire day was hot had a fever so i was giving her tylenol yeah she was just one miserable little girl and only lasted for a day must have been a 24-hour bug by thursday she was total opposite little girl <laughs> she uh was doing great but of course grandma had to come down with that too so i've been kind of battling the flu bug too so it's just been one thing after another this week all right where does the ear end this has to be part of the hair because her ear wouldn't be that well is that part of the face then it's got to be because it's all connected okay <laughs> Oh, boy. Um, so, yeah, we've had colds and the flu bug going around. Um, and that, too. I am feeling better, thank heavens. It is starting to go away. I'm going to use the same skin tone on her. And... Uh, Hey, sassy pants. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, um, still a little queasy at times, but uh, yeah, much, much better. Boy, I have to point out the chisel tips on here are extremely firm. I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, but boy, if you have to get into a fine area a small area with these wow you definitely can it has such a fine tip and it is very firm like the bullet tip that uh wow yeah so i guess i kind of like that because then of course you can go on to the side and get your big areas with a lot more ink 
Just wanted to <laughs> quick point that out. I know I was talking about something else, but it's like, wow. This uh, chisel tip definitely feels different than the normal chisel tip that I'm used to on other sets. Um, anywho, where was I? Oh, I have been having a problem for quite a while with really sharp pain in my side, my left side going into my back. And the last time this happened, it was a bladder infection. And for about a month now, it has just been kind of coming and going. So I didn't go in. And uh, now this past week, it's been really getting bad. And uh, I thought, well, Bob's like, you should go into the walk-in. Like, yeah, but I don't wanna. <laughs> So I wasn't going to. I had made that uh, review yesterday of these markers. Really wanted to get this video made. You know, I was kind of out of commission so much during the week. I didn't, you know, I really had a bunch of videos I wanted to get made yesterday. But uh, yeah, it was, it was getting pretty bad yet again yesterday. So I'm like, okay. I will go in and he insisted on taking me. I'm like, I can drive myself. No, what if they don't want you to drive? What if they put you on something? I said, if they put me on anything, it's gonna be an antibiotic and I won't, number one, have taken it yet. Number two, you can drive with an antibiotic. And uh, no, I won't take you. I said, Bobby just had surgery yesterday. Well, I feel fine. So he did take me in. And I'm like, ah, it's the day before Easter. It's a Saturday. It's going to be packed. It's going to take us forever. And that was, gosh, what time did I think a little after three we went in. Yeah, didn't get back home till 9.30 last night. <laughs> Uh, because of my, I did mention something about my constant cough, you know, and congestion and stuff in the chest area and stuff that I've been having and, um, and, uh, so they took all that into consideration and I, mistakenly said <laughs> something about my you know chest feeling heavy and that there was you know like pressure in there and I just figured you know it was from you know congestion in the lungs and whatnot well as soon as you say anything like that and the fact that you have sharp pain anywhere in your body especially for us women they right away think of the heart because women especially can present with really weird symptoms for a heart attack where we have pain in really odd parts of our body one of which I know is um, like under the shoulder blades in the back is kind of a common area so they were thinking well maybe uh, you know something was more seriously wrong and that's where the pain was coming from and I'm like I'm not having a heart attack I came in because I thought I'm having a you know I have a bladder infection <laughs> well no they had to do an EKG wanted to do a chest x-ray just to make sure you know if it wasn't something with the heart you know wanted to check it out see if it was pneumonia or any you know stuff like that well they didn't do all of that in the walk-in they did do the EKG um, 
And for some unknown reason, the EKG came back a little abnormal from my previous EKG. So yes, and then they were doubly concerned and sent me immediately over to emergency. So it is a really, really good thing Bob was with me because they would not have let me drive anyhow and uh, would had to have wheeled me in a wheelchair from the walk-in all the way over to the opposite side of the hospital where emergency is, which is over half a mile. Yeah, but seeing as how Bob was there, he drove me around to emergency. I felt really stupid. I'm like, good heavens, this is not a heart attack. I think I'm going to use natural oak for her hair. That is BR91. Let's see. Here we go. And I think I'm going to use the chisel again because she has so much hair. Let's start down here. So get over to emergency. And I check in. And I said I was sent over here from the walk-in. That's all I said. <laughs> and boom, just like that, <laughs> a wheelchair appears behind me. And I'm like, holy cow, that was fast. And the guy pushing the wheelchair says, oh yes, when you present with chest pain, we don't mess around. I said, well, it's not really chest pain. <laughs> He said, I said, it's more chest, you know, pressure and stuff. He goes around here. That's the same thing. <laughs> so instead of even being taken into the standard emergency, what would you call them? <laughs> the rooms that they have there in the emergency department, in our emergency department, are like separate rooms that are kind of separated by glass and then curtains and they each have their own sliding door so there is privacy in each of those rooms um but evidently when uh <laughs> there is anything possible with the heart i didn't even know these rooms existed well it's actually one room there are two slots, <laughs> two bays, I guess, in a trauma room. That must be for the more serious cases. <laughs> so I was wheeled in there. And immediately a bunch of people appeared. Got a second EKG. Um, uh, got an IV started, um, so they could take blood through the IV and ran a test. I guess I forgot the name of it. It's something that the heart produces, it starts with a T, that they wanted to get a level on. Evidently, the level must change if a heart attack is you know being detected so they take it once when you're first brought in and then a little while later and so yeah all this is going on i'm feeling really foolish <laughs> i'm like oh my god um so yeah they're doing their thing then they wanted uh chest x-ray so they brought in the portable x-ray machine took the chest x-ray let's see what else did they all do well we were waiting for results from all of that then they had me go and give a urine sample which is the one I was most interested in because I figured it was a, a bladder infection or a UTI or something like that. 
Because again, that's what it was last time I had this pain. And then again, as we're waiting for those results, they uh, wanted some CT scans too yet. One of the chest area and then one of the abdomen, including the kidneys. Especially in my case, I only have one working kidney and that one is on my left side. So that's why I went in right away the first time I had this pain when it turned out to be a bladder infection because I wanted to make sure it was not something with my one working kidney. Um, I did not have an injury to the kidney or anything like that. My right kidney, for some unknown reason, is atrophied and very, very tiny and just is non-functioning. And so the left kidney it has taken over the work of the right kidney. So it is very large for a kidney, but it is doing the job well enough for me that, you know, I don't have to worry about dialysis or kidney transplant or anything like that. So, and I've had that, found out about that for number of years. A number of years ago, I found out about that. But again, they just wanted to make sure it was nothing with the kidney or kidney stones. Whoops, that didn't work out too well. Again, uh, don't work well with the chisels. Maybe down here, I will go with the fine tip. And uh, again, nice, firm, fine tip too. I like that. Um, I think down here I am going to stick with the fine tip. So, um, did all that. They did the CTs with the contrast dye and all that. And so, of course, all of this is taking forever. And then you gotta wait for all the results. They gave me a nebulizer treatment, which I was familiar with because I do have exercise-induced asthma. So I have been on albuterol, the albuterol inhaler here and there. I mean, I would, before gym, I, you know, when I was at the gym and stuff, I'd always use my inhaler um, before working out, and I would use it before mowing lawn, things like that. So they gave me a nebulizer treatment with albuterol, and I think it was an anti-inflammatory. And uh, that seemed to open up the airways a little bit. Anyhow, it did help. And so we were still waiting for all the results. Gave me an IV of fluids to help flush the contrast dye out of the kidneys. And uh, waiting and waiting and waiting. And here's poor Bob sitting on this uncomfortable chair had missed supper. I says, go and get something to eat. Now, is that part of her hair back here? Or is that part of the out? It's not part of the outfit. We're making it part of the hair, I guess. Um, might have been part of the background. Oh, maybe it was part of the dress. <gasps> well, it's her hair now. Um, so I told him to go get something to eat. Finally, he did because I knew after the CT scan we were going to have to wait quite a while for those results. And uh, yeah, so he went and went to the cafeteria, got a sandwich. 
a burger, and uh, yeah, by the time he came back, I was done with the CTs. And yeah, then you wait and wait and wait some more. And uh, by this time, it's ugh, after eight. And I'm getting more and more perturbed. <laughs> it's like, let me out of here. Ugh. And finally, the doctor comes back in and says, okay, everything looks pretty good. <laughs> like I told you so. What a waste. Um, the uh, chest x-ray looked real good. No pneumonia, no uh, emphysema even, nothing like that. So, I mean, that was all good. At least I now know that. <laughs> Um, no kidney stones, no nothing. The only thing that showed up on the chest x-ray is that I, for some reason, have a buildup of scar tissue in the lower left lobe of my lung. Don't know why, but it could be irritating periodically the uh, muscles that run through your side and into your the flank that goes around your back from around your side into your back and so it that could be causing the pain and uh, he says it can affect the you know diaphragm and I says oh is that why I I periodically get these Charlie horses <laughs> through my diaphragm. You gotta kind of twist around and get the Charlie horse to disappear. And he says, yeah, it, it could affect that too. Um, but they don't know why or where the scar tissue came from. And it's like, oh, goody. Uh, so it turned out truly not being much of anything. Um, it just, you know, it is kind of a viral cold. It wasn't a bladder infection. They did give me a couple of prescriptions. One is uh, anti-inflammatory to help my lungs and um, everything kind of calm down because it is all inflamed in there, I guess. Um, probably from coughing so much. <laughs> and uh, then a uh, prescription for an albuterol inhaler, which was good because my albuterol inhaler was getting pretty empty. And I was going to be contacting my doctor, my uh, primary physician, for a refill. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess we're killing two birds with one stone here. I'm going to quick take a sip. So, uh, one moment, please. All right, where was I when we were so rudely interrupted? I think her hair, because she is a stylist, a lot of times they like to dye their hair funky colors, really pretty colors. So I'm going to give her blue hair, make it real different from hers. <coughs> What color blue should we go with? I don't want to make it too dark or the grayscale won't show up. Hmm. Should we make it a pretty bright blue? Or should we kind of go for this marine blue? Hmm. <laughs> Let's make it a pretty bright blue. Brighten up the picture a little. Yeah, how about the cobalt blue? PB71. PB71. Here we go. And I'm going to use the fine tip on here because of all of her bangs. Um, gosh, where was I in my story? I think I was just about getting discharged. Finally. Um, so after, yeah, after he talked to me and... Um, 
said he was sending over the prescriptions. Now normally I go to, well normally I get for my standard scripts for my depression and stuff, I get mail order um, prescriptions because through my health insurance I have now, they're free. <laughs> so I quit my other mail order prescription and, and uh, went with this now, but for other prescriptions, I go to Walgreens. Well, the Walgreens I always go to was closed, so we had to go to the other Walgreens. And uh, so, yeah, finally discharged. And get out of there, finally. And go over to Walgreens to pick up these couple of prescriptions. And Bob and I are like, yeah, they probably won't be done. You know, they won't be ready. And we get in there, and he almost had them done. He said he was just working on them. I'm like, oh, goody, we can get out of here. Well, then, you know, we went and had a seat. And then the pharmacist calls me up asked me if I had ever used that anti-inflammatory before, and I said no. And uh, she said, because do you still take the, and I forgot what she said, it was the brand name of Lexapro, and I'm like, what is that? And then she said, it is your Lexapro. She says, are you still taking that? And I said, yes. And she says, oh, because there can be some abdominal bleeding there's you know a, a reaction between the two meds and so she wanted to contact the doctor again ah, can never do that right into a fine tip and have it look right anyhow um so she contacted the doctor, and uh, they must have just said that, make sure, you know, because um, the pharmacist told me then when she called me back up, um, just to make sure I take them at least like four to six hours apart so they're not in my system at the same time. So I'm like, oh, okay, you know, I take my normal prescriptions right away in the morning so then like at noon I could take this this first dose because I had to take take it twice a day and so go to get rung up and had sticker shock because <laughs> the anti-inflammatory was four bucks copay not bad the albuterol inhaler on the other hand and I know when I got this in the past it wasn't that much of course I had different insurance at that time but this albuterol inhaler was $70 after insurance and that was the brand name and they would not approve or pay for any of the generic one and I'm like, $70? And they go, yeah, we do have, you know, they explained uh, they have a generic version, but insurance wouldn't cover it. If I wanted to pay for that one, that was 40 something. And I'm like, no, nope, uh-uh. Um, and I said, I, I won't take that. I'll just take the anti-inflammatory and call it good. I thought that was just absolutely ridiculous. And, uh, you know, would it help me breathe better? Yes, but was it worth that? No. I just, I thought that was nuts. So, uh, Bob was not happy with my decision. <laughs> Because he was going to pay for him, and I, I didn't want him to pay that. No. So we left with just the anti-inflammatory. I was perturbed. 
you know, after waiting in the ER, you know, we were there for how many hours, you know, only to find this out and then get these two prescriptions and then have one cost an absolute fortune. I, I was just, mm, was not in a good mood. Let's put it that way. Whoops, got a fuzzy on here. And, uh, so finally we're able to come home after what, six hours, six and a half. Poor Bella, you know, didn't know what the heck happened to us. Of course, was sitting here in the dark because didn't have any lights on, didn't think we were gonna be gone that long. So this poor dog's going crazy. Mama and Daddy are home, finally. Oh, uh, I tell ya. So yeah, that was, you know, between Bob on Thursday and Friday. And colds and flu going through the house the rest of the week. And then me yesterday on Saturday. It's just been an eventful week. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, that is uh, the reason, in a nutshell, I guess, why I haven't been making videos. I've been kind of missing an action here. Since part of her hair coming up and around, well, I guess we're going to make it her hair. <laughs> it is my coloring book. I guess we do what we want, right? And, uh, yeah, so I am hoping to be on the mend now, and that will be Bob's last surgery for a long, long time until he's all better and they can take that stent out and his esophagus will no longer close up on him. So, yeah. This blue is extremely juicy. <laughs> so, even though, oh my gosh, how am I going to get in between that comb? I think what we're going to end up doing, because I know it's going to bleed over all of that. Um, I'm going to go in with a... I'm going to go over the whole thing so the comb's going to be the same color then i'll go over it maybe with a dark brown or some dark color because there's no way i'm going to get that colored in between the teeth of that comb without it bleeding over so we will just go over it all if i can even see the comb now We'll see. Once it dries, I should be able to see it. So, enough of my complaining. <laughs> what has been going on in your neck of the woods? Uh, never even asked. I hope everybody's doing well. Just started in on my ranting and raving. <laughs> Oh, my heavens. This may end up being a two-part color in chat. Because otherwise this will be one long color in chat. And I think today I would just as soon break it up into a couple of them. And just kind of take a break in between. Maybe, maybe finish up the color and chat in the morning. So we shall see. I hope everybody is having a great Easter. Happy Easter to everybody. If you are a Christian, I hope 
you enjoyed your Easter service. And for all the rest of you and you Christians um, celebrating Easter that have kids, grandkids, uh, nieces, nephews, any children that are doing an Easter egg hunt, I hope they are all having a good time. Um, I know we had... How do you like her blue hair? <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Well, I'm going to let that dry a little bit more, I think, before I go back with the color on top. Now, what color should we make their eyes? Um, had uh, next-door neighbor's grandkids out yesterday, and they were doing Easter egg hunts. And it was so cute watching them, <laughs> finding all the Easter eggs outside, the bright colored, you know, plastic ones that usually are filled with candies or other goodies. Let me make her green eyes. So, let's make them a pretty bright green. I'm going to make them grass green, GY47. And yeah, it was so cute watching them to uh, the Easter egg hunt, looking for the Easter eggs. And this is the first time in many years that I can remember anyhow that we had really nice weather for Easter. It's either snowing or at the very least raining. Um, and Easter egg hunts outside cannot be done. So, it was nice to have a beautiful day yesterday. It was mid-60s. That was the warmest day we have had in over six months. So, it was so nice. And then I had to spend a lot of it in the hospital. God. Not that I probably would have been outside anyhow, but can enjoy the sun and the warmth from in the house and when I would take Bella outside. And what color should we make her eyes? Let, let me see. I don't want to give her blue eyes because of her blue hair. Should we give her brown eyes? Hmm. <laughs> yes, let's. Or should we give her icy blue eyes? Hmm. Yeah, I think that would be too much. Let's use this one, and that is Raw Umber 102. Nice, dark brown eyes. So, yeah, anybody have big plans for... Easter, having family over, and what you having to eat? Ham, my favorite meat. Not a beef eater, but I do like pork and especially ham. Ooh, so good. Making myself hungry. <laughs> Especially love scallop potatoes and ham. I always have to periodically make that. So nummy. Having a lot of family over. Now that my mom is gone. Boy, I am not coloring too good today here. These are so very juicy. They bleed very easily and I have to remember to stay away from the black lines a little more than I am. Um, yeah, now that my mom has passed, we really don't get together anymore for Easter. 
Um, we do get together for Thanksgiving, which is nice. And then um, I have a big to-do, of course, for Christmas. My kids and I, I'm going to use the same brown on this comb. So it'll kind of look like a black comb now. Gonna get quiet for a minute. I'm concentrating. <laughs> yeah, that's still bleeding over, but oh well. Tis what it is, right? Not much I can do unless I maybe should have went in with pencil or something. Fine liner. Just kind of dot some color in here. Oh, good enough. Kind of gets hidden in there, but I guess that maybe I should have made her a blonde. <laughs> oh, well, is what it is. I'm going to try taking this colorless blender. Let's test this out because... Where was that that I went here? Let's take some of this color out here and let that sit and then maybe a little bit here. And let's see if that pushes the color back a little. And then we can go back over it with the skin tone here. Once it dries. Yeah, it's working. I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit, see if we have to do any more. A little bit down here. See if I can correct my mistakes. You just kind of push your color back in where it should have been in the first place. So again, colorless blenders are not blenders at all. They're fixer-uppers. And this blue is kind of hard to completely, kind of like red. It uh, stains more. Um, this kind of got a little bit better. And in through here, let's get that skin tone back out again. Which one was that? Powder pink. And let's go back in here with that. Now it's probably going to leave a line because now it's going to be a little darker there. Let me just dot this in because you can't see that a whole lot up in the hairline there. Should have done that up there too, but mm, it will, right? Okay, let's make this scissors a light gray. So let's go to that side, and I think I will use this cool gray, this light one, CG2. Okay, so yeah, I hope everybody's having a great, great Easter. I was, I guess, saying <laughs> I don't really do a whole lot for Easter now. We don't get to gather for Easter. And I think, if I remember right, the kids and I used to get together for, you know, Easter. Um, and I don't know why I stopped, <laughs> to tell you the truth, other than, I don't know. I don't know. 
um, but we did. Um, so it's just kind of a quiet day around here. Um, let's see. What should we make her outfit? Let's make it purple. <laughs> clash with her hair, but that's okay. All right, I think I'm going to use a darker tone for the skirt and the blouse, and then maybe a lighter, because it looks lighter as far as the grayscale for, like, the cuffs in the pocket, collar in the belt. So, let's go with um, light violet and lavender. So, 82 and 83. 82 and 83. And 82 is the darker, even though, if you look at them, you can't necessarily tell that. <laughs> the lavender does not correspond real closely to the true color. The The lavender is lighter than this. The tone is correct because, of course, there's more gray in it, but this does look a little bit darker than what the color truly is. So, go in here. We'll leave the cuff lighter. And again, this is very juicy. <laughs> These are definitely juicy markers. And after coloring with them so far, the colors that I have used, I really do still like them. And uh, I could use them in conjunction with the Cali Arts, they remind me a lot of the Cali Arts. So I do want to compare the color charts that, the chart that I have made for the Cali Art with the colors of these Aspire color um, markers and see if I have any new colors. I'm assuming there will be some. There may be some duplicates, but... So then I could use the two sets together and have some more colors. Because these will definitely work great together. That's what's nice about your alcohol markers is they, you know, all work great together in conjunction. Some of your colored pencils, you know, have a little bit of problem working with each other because they're just so different. Like between your uh, Polychromos and your Prismacolor, one being wax-based and one being oil-based, they can work together, don't get me wrong, they can but they're just kind of different animals. So they just both kind of operate a little bit differently. It's gonna be hard to get around those buttons. Again, the juicier your marker is, the more they're going to bleed out. So, we'll see. Stay away from the lines, Lisa. And then I kind of just dab if I need it to go farther. And because these are so juicy, I don't need the chisel to go over the skirt. I think the, the fine tip should work just fine. <laughs> just fine. <laughs> no pun intended.
right. Now with having to stop the recording before, I'm not sure how long that one was. <laughs> I'm closing in on half an hour here on this section, so I think the first part was about a half hour too. So well, that means this is about an hour long, but I would like to get halfway through this picture for part one so that Part two will be about the same length. So we will go for a while longer because, yeah, I am not halfway done with this picture. <laughs> I love that purple. Ooh, that is pretty. Yep, yep, yep. My color. It seems we all have a favorite color, right? Some people, a lot of people seem to like blue. And some do like green. I'm not a big green person for some reason. And I'm not a big yellow person. You know, of course you got to have those colors for certain things. Right? Especially when we're doing things with trees. And flowers and plants. And they definitely have their place. All colors do. All colors truly are gorgeous. I think I'm going to make her shoes this color too because of course she's got a, you know, match. I have always been a huge one when I was a paralegal. And I actually wore these type of boots. I have tons and tons of dress ankle boots that I wore with all of my business suits. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, I need to get rid of those because I don't wear them and they're just filling up my closet. And now with Bob's hernia surgery, I contacted the lead gal that handles the Marathon City rummage sales, the citywide rummage sales, and let her know that I will not, in fact, be in the rummage sales this year after all, because Bob always helped me out big time with that. Um, number one, just cleaning out the garage. Ooh, yuck. I was not looking forward to that. And then I have a bunch of heavy boxes containing things from, you know, just a few things that I kept from previous years that I you know, put in the next year's rummage sale. A lot of stuff I just, I donate then to Easter sales. I have them stop by after the rummage sale. I schedule a pickup and they come and get boxes upon boxes of my donations. <laughs> um, so he would help me get all those heavy boxes down out of a back room back behind my garage. Up on some high shelves that he built and uh, yeah so I would not be having any help <laughs> this year so it would be pretty hard for me to um, do all that myself so yeah no rummage sale this year which it's just a total relief I mean it is just so much work for any of you that have had Roman sales, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, what color do we want to go with here? Let's go with, let's go with pretty pink. All right, so what shade? And I think I will go with a lighter one and a darker one because it looks like, and you can't even see that all, 
looks like the bottom part of the bow and the underskirt are darker just a tad and we'll see what color we make her necklace earrings bracelet watch she's got all kinds of jewelry and so um oh let's see let's see well how about not a whole lot of pinks in this set. There's much more reds, but I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to go with a red outfit or not. You can tell I didn't have this planned out, right? <laughs> um, 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 um. Let's go with azalea purple because that's a nice bright pink. And then to contrast that nice, we'll go with Vivid Pink because it kind of goes along in the same color scheme. So RP6 in the pink. Okay, and then RP87 in the purples. There we go. Okay, so the 87 is the darker so, we will color the majority of the outfit with this one. And then, we will see how we match the jewelry. So, needless to say, I have not been able to work on my diamond painting either. Ugh. I still really don't know if I'm going to be able to get that done in time for Maddie's birthday, the beginning of June. I mean, yes, I do have over a month left, but I just have not been able to dedicate much time to it. It's just kind of hard, especially where... You know, weekends now, I really try to get some of these videos done so that I have some to release during the week, and we'll see. We'll see if I do have to slow down the schedule for release of videos. Maybe I, because right now I, I pretty much try to have some kind of content up pretty much every day. Um, whether it be just a short video or, you know, a diamond painting unboxing, something. And maybe while I am trying to get that diamond painting done, I may have to, I don't know, slow down that schedule. We'll see, I guess. All right. So then I'm going to be a little bit pickier with the darker pink. Hopefully. And see if I can stay in the lines. Can you see how that's spreading? <laughs> uh, that's a sign of a juicy marker. All right, and Heather wasn't too upset about the fact that I wasn't going to have a rummage sale. She's more of the one that wants the rummage sales down here. Anyhow, because of so many people come to the Marathon City wide rummage sales. I mean, we just have thousands and thousands of people that come for the Roman sales. Number one, we are always the first one of the season, and I think that's why they always schedule it for the end, the last weekend in April. Let's use the light pink, I think. We'll go for pale jewelry, pale pink, or P9. Um, so yeah, because we are 
the first one of the season, everybody comes out and we do advertise in a ton of newspapers and, you know, you name it. I think, well, maybe we should make that so that I'll make this pink. And then maybe we'll make that so it looks gold. Oh, no. Oh, no. But, yeah, we just, you know, and we do really well for the rummage sales. Thank heavens, because, like I said, with all the work you put into setting the thing up and then tearing everything down and, oh, my... And that does not really match, does it? No, it doesn't. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like that. Maybe I'll go back in with this dark pink. Yeah, I don't I don't care for that. And that was eighty seven. I'm going to just go over the top. That was just too drastic of a different kind of pink. And it just kind of clashed. This should look a little better. I especially noticed it on this bracelet because it's so big. Okay, let's find a yellow that would maybe look kind of goldish. Let's try the deep yellow, YR32. And to see how this works. So then, if we're making that gold, we're going to make... Oh, uh, no, that looks like a leather band. So that won't be gold. We will make the leather band brown. So let's make that natural oak 91. I'm not sure if that's what I made her hair. I, well, maybe. Okay. And then I think we'll make that stuff gray. That was cougar too. Oh, there it is. I'm like, where did you go? I hope my head isn't getting in the way while I am looking for these markers over there. Yeah, we'll just make it all gray. Alrighty. Okay. What is next? Let's do their mouths. Now, this always kind of confuses me. Is this supposed to, I'm assuming, be teeth, right? So I think I'm just going to leave that alone. And we'll make these two different shades of, like, a reddish pink, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> Because I'm assuming one is kind of like the inside of her mouth and one is her tongue, right? So the inside of the mouth would be like a darker color. Hmm. Don't really have anything that I want <laughs> to use for that. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let's see. I guess I'm just going to use Rose Red and yeah, 
I don't know. I don't know. Um, rose red and cherry pink, I guess. R3 and R5. We'll see how silly this looks. Okay. Wow. Again, very juicy. Holy cow. Even just using dots, it spreads. <laughs> oh my, that looks stupid as hell. <laughs> Oh, my heavens. Well, we're going for it. <laughs> it looks like she's bleeding. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, well. I should have made it. Should have made this more pink, right? Yeah, and they're too similar. Oh, my God. That looks stupid. Oh, my gosh. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, oh wow that is bad let's go with pale pink <laughs> and I can't fix that oh my RP9 oh god I think I just ruined my picture ruined it ruined it ruined it why why did I not go with pink I don't know I don't know I mean, that looks a little better, and it's not even dried yet. Oh, how can I fix that? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. I got to do something. Because red, again, even with the colorless blender, it's really, really hard, even around the edges here, to erase red completely so to erase the whole thing is not going to work we'll see how well that works by putting down a whole bunch of colorless blender maybe i can make it light enough i don't know oh my gosh well, let's leave that alone. <laughs> and let's do the window frame in a brown. I think I'll use a lighter brown. So let's do the rose beige. Or, <laughs> as this color is spelt, rose burge. BR97. All right. Oh, that did not turn out. We're just going to make it all brown. Same shade. If anybody's looking for some juicy markers, this would be the set for you. Holy cow. Trying to go as lightly as I possibly can through here so that it doesn't bleed too much. And it still is a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Not doing too well with these, am I? And it's not the marker's fault, that's for sure. Concentrating, can you tell? <laughs> Trying to stay away from the line so that it doesn't bleed 
over. And that worked. Okay, I think I'll use a little bit darker brown. Well, maybe we'll use the same one for the inlaid. Well, no, I bet you that's supposed to be glass. And so, like where all of their supplies are. So, I think I'm going to make this the same color wood. I kind of like it. And with the shading in there, with the grayscale, this should work good. Match the woodwork to the windows, right? I keep having, okay, I felt the bump. I gotta make sure I'm on the paper yet. Nope. Keep having a set of morning doves flying into my garage. And it's like, please don't be building a nest in here because, you know, I, I love birds, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but, you know, when the garage door is closed at night, you are not going to be able to get in and out of here, so we don't like the birds nesting in there. Every year, we have a set of robins that try to nest on top, they build a nest on top of the garage door opener. And I don't know why when we have trees all around <laughs> outside, but yeah, they come in the garage and try to build a nest on top of there. Well, now this year, and I did have some robins come in a while ago, and but it, I didn't see them trying to nest. Uh, it looks like this is all wood, too. Um, now I just had a couple today, earlier this morning, that were going to come in and I was out there and they flew back out. But I do have a pair of morning doves, um, that kept coming in and insisting on coming in continuously and they did end up nesting. Um, up on a shelf, up high, um, I'm going to go a shade higher for the woodwork up in the ceiling. I'm going to go mahogany. That's 96. Um, so up on a shelf that Bob had built um, to, you know, store stuff in the garage. And yeah, they decided they wanted to nest up there by the tomato cages that are up there. And they just kept coming in, kept coming in. And yes, they made a nest. And I think now she is sitting on eggs. I told Bob, I think it's too late to... <laughs> move the nest or you know try to get them out of there because when i come out the the door into the garage the male flies away but the female stays sitting there and i says yeah i think i think she's sitting on eggs so we best just leave mama alone and they're gonna have to figure out oh shoot They're going to have to figure out what to do when that garage door is closed at night. <laughs> I, you know, there's not much else we can do. Okay, I think 
for now, this is where I'm going to leave it. We, uh, I'm going to zoom back out a little. Have I'm going to make this Wayne's coating, so that will also be a shade of brown. I'm assuming this is like hairsprays and stuff, and you know we have the flooring, chair, and then just the walls, window, left to do. So that shouldn't be, that shouldn't take too long. And maybe I'll figure out what the heck I can do with that mouth. Um because I'll probably re be recording part two before I put up this part. Um, otherwise, I would ask for suggestions, but I do want to finish this right away and, and uh, do the part two. So, I'll see what I can do, and if I can't do anything, I can't do anything. It did lighten up some now that it's dried. Um, and maybe if I do, I think I am going to try just going over it a bunch with the um, colorless blender because I see it did lighten this up some. So I guess that's what I'm going to try first <laughs> and see what I can do. Like I said, maybe I can't do anything and it, it is what it is, I guess. So, okay, well, until next time... Um, I hope you liked watching me color with these Aspire Color uh, Markers. I love that name, Aspire Color. Isn't that kind of neat when you think about it? We aspire to color. Um, so yeah, I, I, I do like the name of the company on here. Anyhow, that is that. Um... Again, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, give me that thumbs up. Please subscribe if you are new to my channel. Again, I hope everybody is having a wonderful Easter Sunday, and until next time, happy coloring. Bye, guys.